Hi, this is Larry up in Brandon, Minnesota. I'm going to do a series of videos, starting with this one, on vermiculture. I want to explain to you how vermiculture, vermicomposting, gardening, and earthworms are so critically tied together. Vermiculture, or commonly known as worm farming, is just a simple way of turning table scraps, compost, grains, multiple things into a rich compost called vermicompost or worm castings which are a phenomenal amendment to gardens, container gardening, starting seeds and multiple things. What I want to do is try to take all the mystery and confusion out of the whole thing and to explain and break it down and make it as simple as possible for you. Vermiculture is taking worms commonly used are red wigglers a smaller red worm which is a compost worm it's not a garden worm it's a compost worm that is found in manure piles and decomposing matter that breaks it down by eating it there's a couple different worms that they use they use the red wiggler which doesn't get real big but is a very aggressive composter there's another worm which is used by a lot of great big uh, worm growers that uh, serve two purposes not only to compost the organic matter and to make a, uh, a great compost and worm castings for that market but also a fishing bait because they are a larger marketable worm used for the fishing industry and I've got a little background in it because I was in the live bait business for quite a while also worked uh, quite a bit with a good friend of mine who had a large commercial worm growing operation and I have some pretty good insight in that. And it's been a lifelong interest and study of mine ever since I was a kid. I've always been fascinated by worms. Read many books by Charlie Morgan, uh, other people that have studied night crawlers, worms, and all things. Because it's a fascinating, it's uh, like Charles Darwin said, the intestines of the earth. It's God's way of really taking what is in nature, worms, and turning organic matter into some of the most phenomenal uh, material for plants uh, and for your garden. And this is what I want to go over. Okay, so let's start with what do I have to do to get into vermiculture? Is it smelly? Is it something I don't want to do? Can I do it in my apartment? Do I have to do it in a large? You can do it in a small area. That's, that's the thing beautiful about it. Whether it's a five gallon pail, a small tote, uh, you can make various uh, different kinds, and I'll get into that. But but why would I want to do this? Why do I want to raise uh, worms, earthworms, to do this? The reason is because the end result is the vermicompost, or the worm castings, which are just phenomenal. The thing is, worm castings are the most nutritional, rich fertilizer known to man. It stimulates plant growth more than any other natural product on the market. They're 99 cent pure natural and organic making earthworm castings one of the mostly highly sought after organic fertilizers today. And as more people seek to grow organic and healthy plants in the gardens, worm castings are the original natural fertilizer put in place by the Creator since the beginning of time discovered by man to be extremely beneficial in the plant and gardening world. As composting worms consume organic substances, they excrete tiny pellets called worm castings, also known as natural organic fertilizer. Organic gardeners rely on this natural fertilizer because it balances the soil's pH and helps retain moisture. Plants love organic fertilizer made from worm castings. Worm castings have 5 to 11 times more nitrogen, potassium, calcium, phosphorus, potash, and magnesium than topsoil, along with many other trace elements and micronutrients, such as magnesium, copper, zinc, cobalt, borax, iron, carbon, and nitrates. This fertilizer is naturally balanced. It's full of bioaccessible nutrients. Each of the nutrients have been naturally processed by the earthworm digest the organic matter in the soil to change it into a more concentrated and easily absorbed form than naturally available in plant soil. The minerals are water soluble and time release so they can easily be available to the plant when the plant needs them. 
You know, earthworm castings can provide performance above and beyond that of artificial commercial fertilizers and even many natural fertilizers. At the same time, it is completely safe to all plants, animals, and people in any concentration. In fact, when used in greater concentration than produced in nature, it has been found the worm castings have great benefits, including you get vigorous plant growth, fibrous root uh, stimulation, improved soil aeration, and it provides beneficial control over plant pathogens and harmful root-eating nematodes. They found that it, it helps defend against uh, uh, damping off and other things. Uh, one of the natural things in the worm castings help plant growth. It would be a great addition to your seed starting mix uh, for unbelievable growth. I'm going to show you in a picture here. These are some tiny Tim tomato plants, okay, that I had started in little net pots and they were growing great. I had left them in there a little too long and they needed to be transplanted. They're getting a little peaked. I put them in a, just a standard commercial potting mix. And they were doing okay, but they weren't really looking that great. So I had some worm castings because I got in to start raising the worms again. And I took half the worm castings. I could even use a little lesser concentration. I used half worm casting, half pea moss, and mixed it together. And I transplanted these tiny Tim tomato plants into this put them in my pot ball garden, which a lot of you have probably seen, and five days later, look at these pictures, I'm telling you, absolutely the most vibrant, healthy green. These plants look like they're ready to jump right out of the pot. I have never experienced a transformation in five days like that, at least in all the time I've been gardening. Unbelievable. I mean, the proof is right there. Uh, so I can see the results how a natural product has just unbelievably changed. So it's just one of the reasons you want to really seriously consider uh, doing some verma, uh, compost and vermiculture doing this uh, because of that. Not just because you can raise worms to make compost. Maybe you want to fish. Maybe you're a fisherman. You want to, uh, the price of bait is extremely high. These are the things to consider. So uh, I'll get into different kinds of worms that you can use for this. But right now, I just want to really explain the benefits, and I think I have quite a bit, of, of, the, of the worm castings or, or worm verma compost itself is a phenomenal, whether you're going to use it just to dress plants, whether you're going to use it and mix and make your own potting mix, whether you're going to use it and make a worm tea, which is unbelievable, like a compost tea, but even the thing about the worm compost is it has, these worms have broken down the plants and nutrients to such a level that the plants can have available, they can take it up right away. They don't have to worry if you put calm manure or horse manure or things like that. Other different bacteria and stuff must work on that and break it down to make it accessible to the plant. The worms have already done that for you. They already have the, the uh, worm castings or vermicompost in a condition that readily, this is why I've seen the dramatic results in five days, because there was nothing left to be done. The worms had done it all. That is one of the key elements of the vermicompost. You know, now that I've explained to you some of the phenomenal benefits of vermicompost or worm castings, in this next video I want to be able to explain to you on your choice, okay? You want to, you've decided, I want to raise worms, I want to, uh, I need to decide which kinds of worms to raise. I realize this vermicompost would be phenomenal for many applications of my garden. And how can I, what do I go about doing it? How do I go about doing it? How do I set up, uh, what do I order, what kinds of worms? That's what I'll discuss in this next one. Next video is what kinds of worms to choose, uh, is there a difference? Uh, do I want to raise ones that just compost? Do I want to raise ones that compost and also have a benefit that, that I could use as uh, fishing bait? I could sell even. I could start a little family hobby that kids could get involved. You could raise some worms, sell locally. Uh, many different aspects of it. How do I set up a, a basic bin? How do I get? How do I get started? That's what I will cover in this next video. I hope you enjoyed this. If you like this kind of stuff, subscribe to my channel. 
and I'm going to be doing a whole series on this stuff. Try to take the mystery out of all this. Make it simple and forward for you. This is Larry up in Brayden, Minnesota. Ciao.